So in the series of videos that we did on Entity Framework, we said that once we're done with Entity Framework, we're going to go ahead and take a look at WCF Data Services and how we can take that same entity model uh, or parts of it and uh, expose that data uh, over a REST-based API using standard Atom XML or JSON. So this, that's exactly what we're going to do in this series. In this series, we're going to talk about uh, OData and WCF Data Services. Now, before we go into the code, a little bit of conversation on OData and WCF data services and why it's interesting to go ahead and learn about OData and WCF data services. So one of the reasons why uh, OData is a compelling story and one of the reasons why you should be interested in learning it is because as an application developer, it allows you to expose your application data to other applications or other application developers using standard XML or open formats like JSON. And uh, the reason why WCF data services become important is because WCF data services allow you to expose your data using the OData format very easily. It literally takes about 15 to 20 minutes to, if you have an entity model, to expose parts of that entity model out as an OData based service, which other developers can start consuming. The fact that it exposes data in standard XML and JSON format itself is compelling enough because uh, other developers can just take that format and parse your data, which is coming in that format and use it however way they want. But uh, Another reason why it's becoming interesting is because uh, multiple SDKs are being launched. So if you quickly go on the OData site, you'll notice that there are multiple SDKs which are available. So if we go to this uh, OData site right here, notice that uh, it has uh, SDKs and client libraries available for uh, JavaScript, for PHP, it has uh, SDKs available for Ruby. It has SDKs available for Windows 7, for iPhone, for .NET 3.5, .NET 4, Silverlight. A host of uh, SDKs uh, available out here. Host of server-side libraries available out here and a uh, ton of examples. Another interesting thing to note is that a lot of different applications and services are actually starting to expose their data using OData. One classic example is SharePoint. Most of your data on a SharePoint site is uh, now available as uh, OData. Netflix is also hosting their data using OData. So with that said, let's uh, quickly jump into our current project out here, which we had developed when we were looking at uh, Entity Framework. So we have a car table out here and let's quickly take a look at the car table and modify it a little bit so that we, we can make it uh, a little bit more query friendly and we can fire some more additional queries on top of it. So notice it has a car ID, brand and model. I'm just going to go ahead and enter a car type as well. And this is going to be an Envercare 150 and let's remove this and let's go ahead and enter a car quantity which would be an integer, remove this and uh, let's go ahead and enter a manufacturing date, manufacturing date and this can be a date time. So that's our car table. I'm just going to go ahead and save this and uh, let's close this. And what we're going to do is we're going to create one more table and a one to many relationship because we need to illustrate how we can handle one to many relationships using WCF data services. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and quickly create a new table out here called maintenance cycles. This is going to be a maintenance table where a car, a single car comes in for multiple maintenance cycles. So I'm going to go ahead and create a maintenance cycle ID, which is an integer, just going to mark it as a primary key. Let's go ahead and turn the identity specification of this to true and is identity to true. And I'm just going to go ahead and have a couple of additional fields here. For example, I'm going to have a date on which the maintenance happened. I'm going to go ahead and have a flag which indicates whether the problem was fixed or not. So let's have a problem fixed flag, which can be a bit and I'm going to have additional remarks. And this can be an Envercare 150. And uh, of course, we are also going to go ahead and need a car ID. So I'm going to go ahead and have an integer. And let's go ahead and save this as maintenance cycles. 
and let's go ahead and create a new database diagram where we can draw a one to many relationship between cars and uh, maintenance cycles let's take the car table out here let's take the maintenance table out here let's throw the car id out here and let's do a one to many relationship between these two let's go ahead and save this click yes let's go ahead and close this and let's go ahead and populate some demo data into this so that we can go ahead and jump directly into wcf data services and expose this data model over a rest based api so i'm just going to go ahead and enter random data out here car type can be t1 quantity can be 10 1 1 2011 just a couple of rows 2011 b3 m3 b3 30 and 1 3 2011 b4 d4 40 and 1 4 2011 so we have four cars out here let's also go into the maintenance cycle table and let's go ahead and add a couple of maintenance cycles for the first car so let's say car id is one car the first car was bought on 1 1 2011 so let's just say that it came in for maintenance at 1 2 2011 and let's say the problem fix was true and let's say this was general servicing and let's say the same car again came in and got serviced this time the problem wasn't fixed and let's say minor problem with the handle and the same car came again on 1 4 2011 and the problem was fixed general service one more service cycle for the same car And let's do one more for the second car. So there we have it. We have uh, some sample data with which we can go ahead and start uh, playing around with WCF data services. So let's go into Visual Studio. This is the same project that we had used for all uh, entity framework uh, videos. So just in case you haven't seen those videos, I'd highly recommend you take a look at the entire series of videos that we did on entity framework. And so we're going to go ahead and import the two tables that we just created. And we're going to say update data model from the database. And let's go ahead and select the car table in the maintenance table and let's click on finish. And notice that entity framework goes ahead and creates a one to many relationship between my car and maintenance car object and draws those two entities for me. Now, one of the things that we're going to do in this video is we're going to expose this model over a REST based API. And in order to do that, we will have to go ahead and add a new website. So let's uh, go ahead and add a new website. And let's take a standard ASP.NET empty website. I'm going to go ahead and specify a path for my website. And let's say entity framework example. And let's take uh, data service website call this uh, wcf data service website let's go ahead and hit ok and notice that visual studio goes ahead and creates an empty website for me and i'm going to go ahead and uh, set this as the startup project so that we can just hit the play button and run this up till now we had been using this console application as the startup project what i'm also going to do is i'm going to go ahead and uh, add a reference out here to this uh, business object project because that is what contains my entity model i'm going to go ahead and reference it and uh, one of the additional things that i'm going to do is i'm going to go into my app.config because that contained my connection string for my entity model so i'm going to take this connection string and i'm going to bring this into my web config let's open this and uh, let's uh, go ahead and paste this here 
And so we're all set to go ahead and add a new WCF data service to our website. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's click on add new item and let's pick a WCF data service and let's call it sample WCF data service and let's hit add. So notice that uh, Visual Studio goes ahead and uh, creates a data service file for me. Along with that, it also goes ahead and creates this uh, class file for me and this class file is initialize service method which is called every time the service initializes so a couple of things that i need to go ahead and change in this file is i need to put in my data context name out here so let's quickly go ahead into our designer class for our entity model and uh, if you remember our uh, context was called sample db entities so let's go ahead and copy this let's close this let's uh, go ahead and paste this here so that's my sample DB entities and I'll have to use the right using statement. So let's go ahead and let Visual Studio add that using statement for me. And let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of these additional things that we have out here. So WCF data services allows you a granularity of uh, which entities you want to expose along with that the exact uh, permissions that you want to give to this set of entities that you're exposing. So this line right here allows me to do just that. I'm going to go ahead and paste this line here. And uh, this is the name of the entity or entities that I want to expose. In this case, I want to go ahead and expose my entire data model, which is based on this context. So I'm going to go ahead and type in star, which tells uh, WCF data services that I want to expose my entire data model. And the permission that it has given by default is all read. I don't want to do that from a collection of these permissions that I have an option of picking. I'm going to go ahead and for the purposes of this demo, give it all permission. So the developers who are accessing my data using this REST based API that I'm creating now have access to all my entities in my data model and they have all access in terms of read and write operations that they can perform on my entities. Not a very suitable option for a production environment, but should be good enough for the purposes of this demo. So we're just going to keep all and uh, notice this max protocol version very important because uh, right now we're using version two of the data service protocol. And the reason why this becomes important as we'll see as we move on in the demo is that there are certain commands like say the select command, which was introduced in version two. And so if you want to use version one, uh, your clients would not be able to invoke those uh, specific query commands on your data service. In this case, we're just going to leave it as version two. And this is just about all we need. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And what we're also going to do is we're going to go ahead and set this data service as a startup page. And we're going to go ahead and run this. So notice that Visual Studio is asking if I want to allow it to modify my web config to enable debugging and I'm going to say yes. And uh, notice that uh, WCF data services gives me this uh, XML back. And what's interesting about uh, this XML is, is the fact that it's lightweight and it's straightforward atom format. Another interesting fact about this XML is that it's giving you a list of all the collections that are there in your data model. So right now we have cars table and we have maintenance cars tables and it's showing you both. And notice that it's showing me hrefs or hyperlinks to both these collections, which means I can quite literally take either one of these collections, copy this bit and uh, paste it here because it's a hyperlink. Let's uh, remove this. Let's go ahead and paste cars here and let's hit enter. Notice that now I'm able to navigate into my car collection and it is showing me all the cars that are there in my database along with their car ID, their brand, their model, their type and their quantity along with their manufacturing date. So fairly straightforward. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start navigating into each one of these cars. One of the quickest way to navigate into, into these uh, cars objects is by using their ID. So I can just type the ID of the car object and uh, I'm directly taken to that specific car object. So notice here entity framework brings me to the car object where the ID is one. Now interesting and important to note that this one is not the enumeration number in the collection. It's actually the ID. So for example, if I was to come here, inside the cars table and if I was to delete the car with the ID 3 and if I was to go back into this and if I was to try to access this uh, car ID 3 entity framework gives me an appropriate error saying resource uh, not found for the segment cars. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, access the car with the car ID 4 and uh, sure enough it allows me to access the car. Another uh, interesting way 
to query these collections is by using uh, dollar commands and the way to do it is form standard query strings with dollar based commands so let's say if i wanted to take the top uh, first record in the cars collection i would type top is equal to one and i would hit enter and notice that it fetches and gives me the first car back and if i was to get the first two records or the top two records i would hit enter and it would go ahead and give me the top two cars back very straightforward along with that what i can also do is like we do with standard query strings i can concatenate and uh, use more than one command so for example in this case let's say if i was to first order by car id in descending order and then i was to take top two records so let's go ahead and hit enter out here and notice that it fetches uh, the last two records which is four and two which means it's it orders car id in descending order and then gets me the top two records in that ordered list of cars in descending order and so there are uh, tons of these um, dollar commands that you can keep on using with WCF data services and we'll try to cover most of them in this series of videos but uh, there's one more thing that we quickly need to take a look at so let's go ahead and jump to the cars collection again and uh, notice that when i get to the cars collection wcf data services is returning all the fields that are there in my table let's say if i didn't want that and if i wanted to select specific fields in my table the way to do that is to use the select command and i could go ahead and pick the fields that i wanted let's say i just wanted brand and i wanted model for all my cars and if i hit enter notice that this time it just gives me brand and model for my cars back now if you remember when i was using this line i had said that the select command is just supported by version 2 of this protocol which means that in this case if we were to stop running this application and if you were to change this to version 1 and if you were to run this application all over again uh, and let's quickly navigate into cars again and uh, this time let's do a question mark select equals let's say brand and model and just give a dollar sign out here and let's hit enter and notice how uh, wcf data services actually gives me an appropriate error saying that uh, you require version 2 to access this command or functionality so let's quickly go ahead and stop this application once and let's change this to version 2 again and uh, let's go ahead and try and run this application all over again and uh, let's navigate to cars again and this time let's again do a select based on brand and model and sure enough this time it lets me do that so this is a very quick introduction to wcf data services in this video what we've done is we've introduced you to wcf data services we've uh, covered some very basic concepts of uh, what odata is we talked a little bit about that and uh, along with that what we also did is we covered some basic concepts like uh, exposing your uh, data model over uh, WCF data services and uh, getting uh, Atom feeds uh, back to other application developers. We touched some basic dollar commands like top and uh, order by and uh, along with that the select command and how that's uh, compatible with uh, version 2 of the protocol. In the next video what we're going to do is we're going to drive deeper into these dollar commands and uh, we're also going to take a look at uh, a command called filter which is fairly useful and we're going to take a look at some additional interesting commands like skip and skip token but uh, this is pretty much what we have for this video thanks for watching goodbye